Hey YouTube, welcome to my first video. So <laughs> forgive uh, forgive it looking amateurish and uh, any thoughts on it. Hopefully I'll take a look at this and make the next one better. Um, so I guess let's introduce what I'm what I'm going to do. So I'm really interested in comic hauls. So I figured you know I go shopping a lot for comics. I'll do my own. Um, and what's it? Yeah, I mean, when I go shopping for comics, I kind of do it two ways. Um, I buy things for my personal collection, and if I see anything that I think is a bargain and I can sell it and make some money and put it towards something I'd really like for my personal collection, then uh, I'll do that too. So this haul's going to be a split of those two kinds of things. So yeah, I went to the London Comic Mart a couple of weeks ago, and... Uh, got these books here and uh, these books here so so I think we're looking at about a 40 minute video at least um, so let's get on with it so right, here's the first book so yeah um, at London Comic Mart it's if you haven't been there before it's it's like an indoor market um, you know there's like 30 maybe 40 dealers there all selling comics from ranging from various things um, I'd say at least half of it is like one pound comics like bargain bins where people just bring like their warehouse down so it's like a pound sale basically uh, and there's lots of good bargains to be found there um, and then everything else ranges from filling gaps in anything from uh, the silver age up really uh, and there's a few guys there who specialize and if you had a uh, like a silver age or early bronze book in mind for your collection and you're struggling to find it on eBay it would be a really good place to go because you'd most likely find someone with it there so that's another real good thing about going there and shopping so anyway let's talk about what I got so the first store I went to um, this guy had about 20 30 boxes from his warehouse and he sells everything for a pound so I picked this up um, uh, because recently it was on like the hot 10 list or something like that um, and and yeah I was like I want this book back because I sold my one <laughs> yeah I sold my one about two months ago um, which was a slabbed 9.8 uh, which I just picked up purely sort of by accident because when I bought it like five years ago this book wasn't a thing it was like a waste slab you know it was ten pounds but chucked in with two other slabs which were 30 quid for the lot and uh, so yeah anyway I was just like right I'll get rid of this these slabs <laughs> and then just like everything all of a sudden hey it's now worth money and I'm like ah damn why did I sell that for 30 pounds um, but yeah, so I saw this for a quid and I thought, you know what, I'll pick it up because it's pounds and maybe I can get rid of it for like five or ten pounds and, uh, you know, put it towards something I really, really want. So, and you know, karma for <laughs> selling my one uh, too cheap. But hey, it is what it is. Um, he, yeah, he also had this one, which uh, I guess most people know what it is, right? It's uh, it's the glowing dark cover and it's pretty I mean even if it wasn't a glow in the dark cover it'd be pretty cool right you know it's just a nice cover and uh, yeah so I thought you know maybe I can turn that into five or ten pounds who knows um, so I grabbed that and while I was in the Ghost Rider section he had a, about four or five copies of this and so I was like I'll just grab one uh, because it's kind of what I call like a cooler comic where um, it goes in the cooler box so you know it's not hot yet um, but I think it's got potential because lots of people are talking about it so just the fact that people are talking about it will probably make it become a thing but um, right now I don't think it goes for that much uh, I could be wrong um, like if it goes for a tenner I'd probably get rid of it <laughs> but um, yeah so this is kind of going to go in one of those boxes for stuff that might be something in the future um, and see how that goes and it's the, it's the first appearance of like the bad ghost rider guy right so I'm sure you guys all know more about it than me so um, yeah and then uh, I picked this one up from this guy so it's uh, obviously the 25th anniversary uh, border cover 
for Conan and um, yeah I grabbed it because it's the 25th anniversary and I figured somebody will want this and the Conan's probably one of the harder ones to find like medium hard because it's not a superhero book right and um, yeah I, I, sort of, I was having a flick through it and I was just like oh wh you know 188 and it's still John Bashima art so it's like you know it's an awesome book really so yeah it's a nice little pick up but I mean when I started collecting um, Conan was just way too expensive when I was a kid <laughs> so it's not something I ever got into but yeah I just picked this up really for the 25th anniversary cover to see if uh, uh, if I could make it into something really um, then I picked up this guy and like, like this is this is I guess is not a hard book to find at all I mean the guy had like almost a whole long box full of these but I figured with the Batman 89 title coming out it was probably worth grabbing like someone might want it somewhere so I figured ah oh, for a pound you know I'd grab it plus it's nice nostalgia because uh, what was it I mean yeah I remember when the movie came out and I was a kid and uh yeah it's just it, it's uh, it's good nostalgia even if it doesn't go you know and I grabbed this one too and uh yeah like you had a whole bunch of the American ones but this one's like a, a UK version you can see it's got the one pound fifty price tag on it and uh yeah this is uh unlike the American one which was like a prestige format this is a, a floppy comic so yeah, I didn't even realize that till I got it home and like opened it up and I was like okay so this one's interesting because it's a you know it's a UK price variant <laughs> as it's now called um, it's a variant yeah um, and yeah I just figured it was interesting for that reason and with the whole 89 thing coming back uh, it might be of interest to somebody so and uh, then I grab this and this is so here we go let's change the pace this is for my personal collection um, Super Friends was one of the comics that my parents used to buy me when I was a kid so this probably came out in 1981 which would have meant that I was five years old and this would have been one of the comics I had in my cardboard box of comics which was comprised of like Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and super friends so you know like my my mum who worked in the uh, news agents where they sold the comics she was she was a DC fan growing up and so she uh, she bought me DC comics so yeah super friends was a uh, was a staple of my childhood and I had this actual issue so get it back with the cover still attached <laughs> you know it's a nice little thing and um, you know yeah it's just a nice little thing to put in my personal collection I like it and uh, same goes for this issue really except for the fact that I never had this one um, this one was always sort of featured in ads in other comics and uh, yeah I just remember sort of seeing this cover and being like oh you know I'd like that issue that looks interesting why Super Supergirl got the hump <laughs> and uh, yeah so, so I'll have to sit down and read this and find out why one day but yeah now I've got it it's, uh, it's just one of those little childhood nostalgia things and uh, yeah I like Super Friends it's uh, uh it's, I know it's not Jose Delbo art but it's like Jose Delbo uh, it's just sort of like real simple but real good at the same time it's what's not there which makes it you know it's it's cartoonish but it's still like really accurate and really good really appealing I like it so um, yeah I grabbed this too because this was a pound and I'd seen it pop up on some list somewhere as like a bondage cover so you know <laughs> but then surely like most of the John Carter <laughs> comics are bondage covers in one way or another right um, but I'd never collected this uh, it looks like real nice condition as well like especially for its age I mean it's got to be like a late 70s early 80s comic so the fact that it's sort of survived this long in this condition I think is a testament to it really um, but yeah I was like oh, you know who's the artist and stuff and I opened it up and it turns out it's Dave Cockrum and uh, I was never a real big fan of Dave Cockrum when because I've only ever really seen him draw X-Men and uh, I was like he's okay uh, I appreciate what he does and you know but 
it just didn't flick my switch, you know, and uh, maybe it's because he was sort of sandwiched between Neil Adams and John Byrne, who were sort of two guys at the top of their game, and uh, yeah, just like for my age or whatever, I don't think Dave Cochran really sort of set the world on fire, I don't know. But I looked at this and, you know, flicking through it, and uh, the, the art's fantastic, really, really good, so I don't know whether this was something he was more interested in, so or whether he was working with a different inker, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the inside of it is just wonderful to look at. So i uh, really pleased to sort of picked it up to get the experience really. But ultimately, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna move this one on. And then, yeah, with this guy's stall again, I picked this one up uh, because last time I was there, I bought some Wattlers from like the early numbers um, to fill some gaps in some stuff I had in my PC and when I got home I was sort of just checking values and stuff and it was just like wow the, the values are the ones at the back end of what well, are actually quite high and so I better check that when I go next time and uh, this issue here is one of those uh, high value ones uh, because it's the first appearance of uh, Spider Ham's version of Venom. <laughs> I think his name's Pork Grind or something like that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was like, I made a point to try and find uh, the later what there's because I know that you've got like uh, the Spider Ham version of uh, Spider Man 2099 in there too, but they didn't have those, so boo. But uh, yeah, managed to find this, so that's good. You know, love a pound that can turn into, you know, a few pounds, so that's all good. And yeah, the last sort of bundle I got from this guy is all PC stuff, really. And uh, what was it? Yeah, I was really pleased to find this for a pound. Um, it's obviously X Zero, Man of War number one. Um, I collected all the Valiant stuff when I was when I was a kid. So like in nineteen ninety two when it all came out, um, sort of missed the beginning. I started collecting around about when Solar number eleven came out. <laughs> <laughs> which was a kick in the gut because uh, it was it took me decades to find Solar 10 um, and yeah in a, in a nutshell I, I sort of collected Valiant for about a year and went back and got all the back issues uh, apart from Solar 10 and then yeah about a year after Unity I just the first few issues of each series was worth a lot of money and so I sold the whole collection to my local comic shop and uh, over the last few years, I've been reacquiring uh, Valiant comics that I was interested in. So I've acquired all of the Magnus comics, all of the Rye comics, uh, because they're sort of set in the future and share the same universe. So all the Harbinger, because I just really liked Harbinger, I really liked the concept. And uh, what was it? apart from the send away zero which is sort of near impossible to find in britain it's just you know because you couldn't send away for it here it's just really difficult to find um yeah now i'm collecting x zero um and yeah um i've already got number one but the condition on it is not great and i took it to a convention and i got it signed by uh jim shooter at a different convention i got it signed by bob layton so yeah i really wanted a i really wanted a copy that wasn't signed uh and was in better condition so this was a pound so you know i can't knock that i buy that all day every day and uh like the next few comics are just gap fillers for x zero so you know it's nothing too too hot so i'm just gonna whiz through these real quick um yeah basically with x zero i've got like now after buying this lot I've got uh, issues 1 to 43 and uh, yeah a couple of weeks ago a really good friend of mine he sort of messaged me and was like hey I'm at this shop and they've got this big run of X0 um, what ones do you need so I sent him like, my wants list and uh, he was like yep they got all these he, the guy wants like three pounds an issue <laughs> and I was like he wants what I was just like no that's too expensive I was like I'm going to the mart in a couple of weeks um, maybe I'll have them there for like one pound, one pound fifty, which you know I'm happy to pay for these all day, every day. But yeah, three pound just seems like too much, really, like for these later valiants, you know. So yeah, and luckily it paid off because virtually everything that the guy at this shop had 
um, I found at the Mart, uh, right up to almost the uh, the issue. And then I found this with two, which is number 50. And there are two different versions of this cover. So you, as you can see, there's like half a guy here. And the other version is the one that goes on the right. And it has the other half of that guy. And so, yeah. So sort of from 44 up to 60, whatever it is, uh, that's when I'm missing an Xero. And uh, with any luck, I'll find those one day for a decent price. But yeah, they're just really hard to find, sort of over 40. Everywhere I go sort of has up to 40. And uh, then after that, yeah, it's just, it's tough to find those. And I guess people stop buying Valiant so much then. And, you know, I just don't want to pay the eBay price on them. I'd rather just try and find them in the wild. So, so yeah, after that, that was the end of that stall. Well, actually, I did get a few more uh, issues on that stall, but I'm kind of going to save them for the end because they're really good ones. So, uh, yeah, then I went to another store, which is run by a friend of mine, and his store is really cool. He sells sort of like stuff that's well out of my wheelhouse. He sells uh, a lot of Golden Age stuff, a lot of early Silver Age, um, and yeah, just things I'd never even heard of um, because people, they were so rare when I started collecting back in like the late 80s, early 90s. Um, that you know I, nowhere I went even had that stuff and uh, you know it's cool because I get to go for a, a beer with him after the shows most shows not this time sadly because of all the Covid restrictions um, and then we sit down like and we have good old Netta and he tells me all this stuff that I didn't even know about you know it's like uh, really really interesting stuff so he had he cleared out like his lock up or warehouse whatever you want to call it and uh he had a load of books for 20p and I think I got like 10 books off of him and uh, when I took him up to him he was like I'll just take him you know I want to get rid of this stuff uh, he's like you know buy me a drink sometime and I was like okay bud no problem so yeah so we grabbed this which is a J. Scott Campbell cover which uh, what was it yeah I'm going to see if I can get a few pounds for that because I like J. Scott Campbell but it's not something I collect so yeah, it is what it is. Great cover though. And um, he had this too. Um, that's obviously the uh, first reveal of uh, Contessa, uh, Nick Fury's girlfriend, whatever her name is, um, Bim, uh, the, the head of the new Hydra. And um, what was it, in case the relevance of that is lost on anybody. Um, she's the girl played by the girl from Seinfeld in Falcon in the Winter Soldier so I guess it's going to lead into something so yeah so great pickup for nothing oh. um, also this and I even you know said to him you know dude you know you got this in your boxes right for 20p it's like a 1977 comic you know you sure about this and he was like ah, you know what Dave <laughs> it's a pence copy <laughs> <laughs> he just has no interest in it at all to him it has no value you know and um, it's like fine well you know if you don't care about it then I'll take it and uh, you know it's just sort of a beautiful example of John Bernard again and uh, it just in this really good period that he did round about you know the same time that he did his run on uh, Marvel Team Up which the, the later Marvel Team Ups he did uh, not the first three or four, um, which the inking I guess wasn't so great on, but the later ones were just some of the best artwork I think he did, and this is from that same period, just really really cool, like 70s stuff, and like I have this already, but I'm not sure if my one is as good as this, so I'll have to compare them and sell the one that's not as good, um, but you know, for 20p or nothing, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to take that all day, so uh, next thing that was in there, was uh, this, which obviously the second War Machine armor. Um, what was it? Yeah, I've recently become sort of interested uh, in Iron Man. Uh, again, a friend of mine is really into Iron Man, and uh, you know, I was always aware of the character, and, but I'd never really collected it or been that into it. You know, even after the movie came out, where it was just like hey this is really cool you know I was like you know it's okay it's, you know, it's a show head right you know <laughs> it's, it's it is what it is it's cool um, and yeah you know, my buddy who's just so into it has sort of you know, ignited my interest in it especially in War Machine as well and um, 
turns out the artist of this issue um, he lives like two towns over from me so my friend got some artwork from him got some commissions and um, I was like hey you know rather than get him to post them uh, let me go over and pick him up from his studio <laughs> so I can go and meet this comic artist and see what his studio is like and my friend's like yeah yeah I'll, I'll message him and find out and it was like yeah yeah sure do that so this is a couple of years now you know before Covid and uh, it's just great like great experience just to go and chat to him for like 20 minutes half an hour whatever it was and pick up this artwork and uh, yeah I mean I really really would like a, a 182 for my own collection and uh, I found it a few times over the, over the last couple of years but I, it's always really rough <laughs> it's uh, I always find new stands of it and they're always really rough so yeah it's a shame I just never seem to find one uh, yeah at the, at the right price or, or in a decent grade really so but yeah that one mm, that's a 50 50 I'm not sure if I'll keep that or whether I'll flip it, it depends so and uh, yeah, I grabbed this. Uh, I grabbed this because my son was sort of expressed some interest in Lobo uh, a, a week or so ago before the mart. And I was like, oh, you know, it's a 20p comic. I get it for my kid, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I got it home and I saw the mature thing on the front and I was like, hey, it's, it's not that mature. I used to have this. Like, I'm sure it's not that bad. <laughs> then I opened it up and I was like, oh, yeah, it is that bad. Yeah, Bisley is not for nine year olds. <laughs> it's just yeah straight away it's got him like flipping the finger and you know just like mass violence and all this kind of thing so I was like oh okay right yeah I can't give this to my boy yeah I'll have to keep it back for a bit so uh yeah sorry dude I got your comic but you, you, I've got to hold it back so <laughs> but like I, I had all these I bought these off the rack like when they came out and I, yeah, I had like the first series and the Christmas special and the first two of this. And then I just didn't bother buying the other two because because Bisley left the project. And I was like, well, there's no point buying it unless Bisley's doing it. So, yeah, I wasn't interested after that. And uh, yeah, I sold them a few years ago. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, also, I managed to I grabbed this one because I was just like, A, I was like, what's well, kind of interesting? But B, I was like, what's with the UPC box? It's you know it's blank and I tried to do some research on this and I can't find anything on it like literally nothing I don't know why this has a blank UPC box I've seen a direct one I've seen a newsstand one but I haven't seen a blank one so I don't know whether this came with I mean kind of come with a figure so I'm not really sure about this one or, so if anybody knows if anybody's watching <laughs> and anyone knows um, please leave a comment because I have no idea it'd be really good to know what this is so next one yeah I grabbed this because I guess it's kind of the most valuable of all the young young blood comics right not young ones comics never made any of those shame uh, yeah and um, again like I, I used to have this uh, bought it off the rack and I found under, I had like the pink one I think and then I found this one in like a charity shop a few years ago near where my parents live and then I sold the whole run of Young Blood together when the profit movie thing came along so you know got the got the biggest profit from it I guess um, but yeah for 20p or for nothing it's really worth it so that's fine I picked this up because I collect Savage Dragon and it's like my book and uh, Savage Dragon is much easier to collect than Fantastic Four, certainly a lot cheaper. Um, but I've been there since the beginning, I guess, and uh, I I love it. And uh, what was it? Yeah, it's it's just what I collect. And so to find this, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna grab that. I mean, it's got a little tear on it where there was a priceless tag on it, and I pulled that off unsuccessfully. But I, who cares? It's a sewage dragon. It's not a savage dragon. It's nothing special. It's it's worth what I paid for it, you know. So there you go. Um, this one's also a PC comic, uh, Battle of the Planets, because I collect that. And yeah, I'm just trying to find all the issues in the manga. This is the only one I have. Uh, and I'm trying to find the last two issues of the Princess mini series, and then I'll have the whole lot. So I'll be very happy. And that was everything I got from my pal. And. Uh, for either 20p or for nothing so that was really cool um, 
yeah, ventured on around the room and found this guy who was, uh, <laughs> yeah, rather than one pound and 50p comics, like he was trying to outdo everyone by having 90 pence and 40p comics. <laughs> So I was just like, yeah, that's it. Stick it to all these one pound guys with your uh, 90 pence comics. Go on. But, you know, he had some good stuff. I had a Roman... I should have had a better look for his boxes, really. But what was it? it? I don't know. I was at that sort of... I needed something to eat and I was a bit tired stage at this. So I didn't really look too well. And I was chatting to the guy quite a lot. So I wasn't paying a lot of attention. But I found this uh, for like 90 pence. And I was like, yep. It might have even been 40 pence. I can't quite remember. So I was like, yep, I grabbed that because it's, it's dragon related, you know, so, and this is another version of the same comic, so it's the same number, but I think there's like six different covers, so, you know, whatever, for 90 or 40p, you know, all day, every day, so, and the other comic I got from this stall was this, for, and that was definitely 90 pence, and I just couldn't believe it, because I was like, well, hang on, this is uh, First Blood Man the Chronic, it's Mike and Laura all read, you know, <laughs> it's a great book. I mean, it's got to be worth at least £10, you know, because it's the First Blood Man the Chronic, right? And Kevin Smith's really important for comics and all that sort of business. So, but I mean, I got it because I love, love Mike and Laura all read, so uh, what was it? But I'm a big Kevin Smith fan too from uh, back in the days, so yeah, you know, it was a no-brainer really, you know, for 90 pence, I wasn't going to leave that there, and uh, that was definitely going in my PC too. Um, next thing, bumped into a bud of mine, um, who sells on Facebook, and I bought some stuff off him like over about three months, he just, you know, he put stuff up and you say, I'd like that please, and at some point you say, right, uh, cash me out, he sends you a total, and he puts it in the post, or if he's if there's a mark going on he'll be like i'm getting a mark do you want me to bring your comics and it's like yeah so um i got a bunch of 50p comics off him um so starting off with this one which i was really pleased to get uh because every time i look for a brightest day this one's always missing so that's like the first aqualad the new aqualad um so yeah i've been looking for this one for a while um what was it and yeah it's gonna probably go in the cooler box sort of thing but yeah, it was just nice to find it, especially for 50 pence. And I grabbed this one off of him, which is uh, probably going to go in my personal collection because I, I kind of like freaky comics, and this is a freaky comic. Because um, it's when, uh, what was his name? this guy's name, is it Major Disaster or something? It's a real good villain name like that. Um, he he kills um, Green Lantern Free's girlfriend. And, uh, and and then stuffs her body into a into a freezer fridge or whatever, and it's just like seriously, and uh, and this is a code book too, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, I mean, yeah, obviously you don't see anything, but it's uh, it's, it's it's implied, you know, like, and it's just like, I mean, what were they thinking, uh, you know? But I get it, and but it's kind of it's a good conversation piece, right? And it's kind of funny, so yeah, I, I wanted it, so been looking for that for a while and the same thing you know it's always missing from boxes when you look through a green lantern around I, I grabbed this because it's a combo pack and it's still sealed uh, I don't think it's anything but for 50p you know whatever you know and I grabbed this off him too because like I said I collect dragon and like I wasn't really interested in buying this anywhere but it was 50 pence and you know so <laughs> why not um, I grabbed this off him because he, he was selling a whole bunch of Avengers spotlights and uh, yeah in the in the John Byrne run of uh, West Coast Avengers uh, Tiger sort of gets turned into a cat and shrunk by Hank Pym and he never finished that story off and someone else finished it off in this issue so I was like you know it sort of completes that set I guess uh, so it was definitely worth me picking up for 50 pence uh, I grabbed this uh, because I'm, yeah, because it's the first Valeria Richards, and uh, I just figured, you know, it's a cooler box one for 50p, it's totally worth getting, so yeah, and uh, I grabbed this one off him too. I think that was a pound run 50p, uh, it's just a cool cover, but is that is that the one that Jared Leno or whatever his name is, is going to play Morbius? Is that the one he was reading on set? Did, is that what happened with this? I can't remember, but 
it was stuck in my mind so when I saw it I was like yeah I'll grab that for a pound and the last thing I got off of him was this um, and that was purely because I've seen a few people feature it on their channels and specking on it and their people are pretty good at specking so I was like that ah, for 50p and it's in good shape I was like you know whatever I'll pick that up and put it in the cooler box if it ever becomes something you know it'll become part of something even better right so after that that was kind of room one of the market and the market's made up of three rooms like a big room and then a tiny room that you go through uh, that leads into the third room which is like a medium sized room so yeah this is uh, me venturing into the tiny room where there was a guy who had like eight ten boxes of stuff he was sending for a pound each so I grabbed this because it's like dragon related the uh, guy who does this book he, it's the guy who created Megaton, which Dragon first appeared in, and like some of these characters appear in Dragon uh, and appear in backup stories in Dragon. So, yeah, if I can find Big Bang comics for a pound or less, I'll always pick them up. And what was it? That's number three. <laughs> I just realised the other day when I was bagging and boarding this that, that I bought this comic like three times already <laughs> because I can't keep track of what Big Bangs I've bought and I haven't bought because there's like a calibre published one and there's like an image published one and yeah I just I don't pay enough attention I just don't expect to find them so they're not like on my list so and uh, the same with this number two uh, which is the I believe it's the caliber one again because there's no image logo um, and I might have this I'm not sure but I know it's probably I have one with like a big tape tear on it so I think this is an upgrade um, and yeah he had this too and again I had to turn around to him and be like are you selling this for a pound and he was like yeah 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 and, uh, like that's the second print of uh, Jupiter Legacy Jupiter's Legacy 1 uh, but more importantly to me it's the Mike and Laura all red cover and yeah that's what I'm interested in you know big fans of them like huge fans of them and uh, so yeah for a pound I was going to pick that up all day and uh I, I've only really recently got into Mike and Laura all red. Um, I think racking my brains, it was when the uh, I Zombie, the first series of that came out on TV, and I loved it. I just really loved it, and I was like, okay, I should read the comics. And so yeah, I picked those up, read those, really enjoyed them, and then it might have been at the same time, just before, I'm not sure. Um, uh, the All Reds were doing uh, FF with Matt Fraction and I was reading Fantastic Four and FF um, and uh, both by Matt Fraction and the FF run was like my favourite it was just so fun and it was just really funny and I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed Mike's art um, with, just with the plot I thought it went really really well together so yeah, it got me really interested in him. And then, of course, the next thing I think would probably have been Silver Surfer with Dan Slott. And that is just amazing. It's like one of my favourite comics ever. So, yeah, that sort of cemented my love for uh, uh, the All Reds. Um, but they're really expensive to collect. Because <laughs> uh, their early stuff, which is all indie, is like really hard to find in the UK. Uh, uh, it just is, you know. But people don't make space on their shelves for... Uh, 80s and 90s indie books uh, unless it's Image because probably not that many people are interested in it compared to a bunch of DC and Marvel stuff so yeah it's really hard to find it's really expensive to collect and of course they do lots of these one in whatever covers and even though this one's a second print so it's still you know like a smaller print run variant right so yeah they're, they're, they're a pain to collect but they're awesome I just love them so yeah that was everything from this store uh, and then I went around to this other guy's store who's like really into British comics and British comics if you're if you didn't grow up in the 80s in Britain um, they're sort of magazine style they're magazine size and um, yeah he really likes them so he's got lots of 2000 AD uh, lots of things like Eagle um, and stuff like that so but then he has like 10 boxes or so um, of 
uh, American comics there too so I had to browse through his American stuff and I found two comics I found this one which was two pounds so, so it's a really expensive comic for the <laughs> <laughs> for this particular trip it's like one of the one of the two most expensive ones i bought two two whole pounds wow you know big spender um yeah um but i i love this cover it's just cool i really really like the design of uh, miss marvel 2 um i just yeah i think that's it's for me it's just really striking it's really cool and it's a first appearance right so you know uh it's pretty i've got one of these already but this is definitely an upgrade which is why i bought it and uh yeah uh i'm thinking what was it obviously i'll flip the other one now um but i was kind of bummed out because when i got home um this one's got like a just a little color break on the back from like a, someone's finger where they caught it or something like that probably where it's been in a box with no bag and board so yeah i was kind of bummed out that the front of it looks like really clean but yeah then you've got this black back cover you've got this color break so i was like ah damn and he had two as well so i was just like oh if i'd have looked at them blah, blah, blah. but i never look at comics you know i never take them out of the bags at these places i just you know it says i maybe i got to change my habit i don't know but you know i was like it's two pounds you know even with the damage it's still worth it but i would have liked a better one so hey ho but um, I managed to get another book from this guy as well for two pounds. So these are the two most expensive books of the whole haul. Uh, so yeah, he had this for two pounds. So yeah, I was very, very happy to find this. Um, what was it? I guess this is like, what, a 50 pound book, maybe? Uh, maybe more, I don't know. Um, it's one of the appearance, one of the first appearances of Darth Maul, right? So, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's it's a great find for two pounds. I was really, really pleased to find that. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, and my son really likes Darth Maul. So if uh, the conventions start up again soon, like we'll, maybe we'll, we'll, when Ray Park's doing one, we'll take it and we'll get it signed by Ray Park for my boy. Um, what was it? See what he says. If he doesn't want it, then maybe I'll stick it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and see if I can get a few quid for it to go towards something else. We'll see what he says. We'll see what he says. So, yeah. Uh, and then I went into like the third room, and in the third room, um, it was all Funko Pops, like everywhere. And I was like, right, well, this room's like a total waste of time then, because I'm not really interested in Funko Pops at all. Uh, and I went to leave the room, but I couldn't because it was like a one-way system because of all the COVID stuff. So I had to go all the way through it. Um, and I just found this guy tucked in a little corner, like couldn't even see him really. Like, he must have had like six or eight boxes, and he had like uh, a lot of nineties stuff, lots of sets bagged together. Um, and one end of his table was really busy, um, and I just couldn't even get near it. There were so many people there, um, so I, I skipped that. But the left hand side of the table where I was, it was just me. So I was like, great, you know, four boxes at me, that's fine. And he had some 2005-ish Teen Titans in there. So I was like, okay, this, there's a couple of keys here, right? Uh, and he had um, things like Coyote and uh, Omni and that sort of thing. So, you know, like 90s indie stuff that, yeah, people don't give any shelf space to in shops. So, yeah, it's a, you know, tough to find stuff if you want it. Um, so I was like, okay, let's see if the, maybe there's not fallen ones in here, right? So anyway, um, yeah, I, I grabbed this, which is like the first cover of Miss Martian, right? So, and I, I think her first appearance is the one with Kid Devil on the front, but she's in it for like a panel. So I, I, I don't know. I just, this is on the list. So, and it was 50 pence. So I grabbed it. I was like, yeah, you know, it's like a cooler box comic. It'll go in there until it becomes something properly. Um, but yeah. That, that's kind of all this was about really and they had this one too which is yeah obviously the first uh was the name ravenger uh rose slade is it right so yep i was just like i'm not leaving that behind for 50 pence and what was and yeah last last of all from this guy um with all the coyotes and stuff uh he had this and i have never ever seen this before in the uk so I was really, really, I was like, wow, you know, this this is a real, real tough thing to find. And it was 50 pence. And, and, you know, like, if you don't, if you don't know, 
Um, this is the first published work by Adam Hughes. It's a pin-up in the back, and it's a really nice pin-up too. So, uh, yeah, that was a good find. I was really pleased with that. And, uh, yeah, um, not much more to say about that other than what I've already said, really. So, just to go back to the beginning of the first stall, the one pound stall. So I said I found a few good things off of him, and I didn't want to sort of put all the good stuff out there straight away. So, yeah, these are like the, the last four that I got from that guy. So I found this for a pound, and it, it's, it's, it's just really awesome condition. Like for a black comic, you know, there's like no spine ticks. Um, I'd say this is a 9.8, 9.6 contender, easy peasy, you know, just really, really, yeah, you know, I was just really, really, really pleased to find this in this condition, um, and, you know, find this for a pound, it's just, like, I've, there's, I, I looked it up on eBay when I got home, and there's like a 9.8 selling for, you know, up for sale for two, 250 quid, you know, it's like, I'm going to go for a pound, <laughs> and, um, uh, and there's raw copies going from sort of like 70 to 90 or 100 and but they're, they're selling for 70 you know so I mean that's just really really good I was so pleased to find find this um, and then I I found this one as well <laughs> behind it so yeah uh, another great find really I was just over the moon with that and uh, yeah, sort of beaming really. I was like, I'm sure this is worth something. Somebody else was like selling it there for like 35, and I was like, oh, nice, 35 pound comic for uh, for a pound. And then I yeah, got home and checked the uh, checked it on eBay, and it's like, oh, maybe it's a bit more than that. So yeah, that's uh, that's really really exciting. I mean, like off this off this guy. I mean, last time there was a mark, which was what a year and a half ago. Um, I managed to find five copies of X Men two two one first Mr. Sinister for 50 pence each and they were all really good grade so this was like my equivalent find hit you know of that off of this guy um, yeah and so I was I was I was really pleased it was really made it worthwhile um, what was it but you know there's still I found this one too <laughs> and uh, what was it yeah yeah so and they're all they're all really high grade they're all 9.8 9.6 possibly I'm no expert on that type of thing, you know. So if I put the, when I put these on eBay, I'll just do like a real good flatbed scan and just say, you know, look at the pictures. Um, you determine it. I'm not going to send them away to get slapped or anything like that. It's not that's not the sort of thing I'm interested in. Um, but this sort of thing's good because I mean, actually going to the show and buying all the comics and everything, you know, I added it all up and like with the travel, getting into London, um, food and drink. And the comics, like the total for the day was like ninety pounds. So you know, like maybe I can move two of those, and that cover the cost for the whole day. So that's all my X zeros, all my PC stuff, everything paid for, the whole day out paid for, and some extra comics. So you know, it's good. That's why I do this. I do this to offset the cost, you know, of uh, going and finding the stuff I want. So, and last of all, I managed to grab this one off of him too. So, yeah, it was just really, really, really good day, really. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's everything I picked up from there. Um, um, like I, I hope I said at the beginning, it was a long time ago now, so I can't quite remember. But um, and it's my first video, so forgive me if I didn't. But I was saying that you know I go and when I go shopping and when I go to a mart or a convention or whatever, you know I dig to try and find stuff that I can sell so that I can put it towards something I really, really want. Um, because, uh, you know, I'm not a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> not, not even well off, you know. So I have to be, what's the word? I have to be uh, clever about what I do to raise money to buy things that I want because I can't afford the stuff I want off of, my, off of my wages, you know. I just have to do this to get the things I love. And... Um, on my next video, hopefully, I'll have moved some of this and I'll have bought something that I can show you that I love out of the funds I've raised from it. But because this is the first video, I'm going to show you what I bought from the last sort of major shopping spree I had. So the last time I had a major shopping spree um, it was when they lifted the lockdown the first time around here. 
and I went to a, a shop that's about an hour away from me but it's a really really good shop for treasure you know loads and loads of stuff it's just so big they don't keep track of what's in it and I, it's not you know it's not their main thing anyway so it's just a really good place to go hunt stuff and find stuff anyway so yeah again I covered my petrol I covered my food uh, I covered my personal comics and then when I sold st the stuff I sold I had about 300 pounds left over um, so yeah I went on eBay and had a good scour and it's like you know what can you buy for 300 pounds um, that's good investment um, you know what can you buy for 300 pound these days anyway right so anyway enough talking this is what I picked up and yeah I, I got I got this because it's it's a key book right but it's a real affordable key book um, and yeah I had, I had to get a, I had to win it in an auction because if, if I'd have got slabbed one it would have been like seven hundred dollars so this one was like three hundred dollars so yeah I got it with the profit from my haul so yeah this just sort of give you an example of things that why I why I buy the this the the treasure why I dig and see if this camera works like this but it's it's a nice nice high grade copy I think oh there we go I'll get better at that for next time but yeah so that's what I treat myself to out the profit from my last haul and uh, yeah I look forward to um, seeing if I can make some money out of this one and getting something else that I think is really interesting to show you guys too so yeah that's what I do and that's why I do it and for me this is just this was some this is what I could afford <laughs> you know I'd really like to buy an FF48 one day um, but this is what I could get with uh, with the budget I had and I, I was saying to my buddy I was like what can I get for like you know 250 pounds 300 pounds that's you know that's worth that I'm gonna win on an auction you know that someone isn't gonna snap up and slab and double their money on it and rah 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 and uh, we're wrecking our brains over it and in the end I got a little bit of inspiration on this one it being you know like a key uh, because it's been used in like at least two of the spider-man movies right um, and what was it but not a it's not like the first appearances of the Sinister Six or wh whoever of other villains. You know, every villain Spider-Man first appearance is like astronomical, right? Um, so for me, this was like made sense. It it's kind of undervalued, and but this is what I want in my collection. You know, it's like I've got I don't know. Like at the moment, I've got like about fifteen, maybe twenty boxes in my collection because I've been collecting since nineteen eighty seven and um, on and off and now what I'd really like to do is condense down that volume and I'd rather have one box full of comics like this um, than 20 boxes full of um, early 80s to early 90s stuff which is the sort of thing I have at the moment apart from the Valiance <laughs> which I love in fact you know what probably when you get down past 10 boxes that would be the ideal the ideal would just be to have yeah like you know loads of stuff like this um, but you know we'll see what happens so there you go that's my video thanks for watching all the way to the end um, hopefully the lighting's not too bad on it and the sound's not too bad on it um, but yeah I'm going to do my best to improve that for next time uh, I've got a little shopping trip planned for mid this week uh, at that place for where I bought the comics that funded this so if I can spend like 100 to 150 pounds there uh, and flip some of those that would be a good haul video so with any luck in like seven days be able to put something else up here and uh yeah and, and show you that so yeah thanks for watching and uh oh like and subscribe please you know it's, it's like it would be cool to appear on more people's searches and i believe that's how that happens so yeah but yeah please like please subscribe please comment um what was yeah that's it any tips to make the video look better constructive ones please then uh yeah, feel free to do that too 
Thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.